Welcome in a round of the bases, extra innings, four final questions with Kim Becking. Kim, let's start with this, the book, which I feel like there's more to it than just the title, but my, my wife likes Nordies at noon or Nordies at any time of the day. Eh, yeah. If I'm being honest, I don't mind it either. Yeah. Tell me about that book and, and how it really impacted your life. Yeah. So, you know, 20 years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 30, and there weren't a lot of resources for young women in cancer at the time. So there were four of us who started meeting at Nordstrom's Cafe as our own support group and decided we were going to write a book. We didn't know anything about it. Right. Um, and out of that came a book called Nordies at Noon. And, uh, you know, for me, and, and here's the interesting part, because, uh, you know, and that was my first book. I've had I've had books since then and, and working on some. But um, one of the co-authors who was the reason I found my lump, she was diagnosed at 24. She passed away at 29 and she passed away about halfway through writing the book. So her family, uh, we interviewed her uh, and then her family helped us finish the book. We originally had an agent in New York. Uh, that was walking us through the, the traditional publishing process. And this was before Amazon and all the easy ways now, right? This was years ago. And we promised Patty, our friend, that we would get it out. And she'd passed away. And it was taking too long. So we fired our agent. We hired a local company in Kansas City to walk us through the self-publishing process. And we initially self-published. We sold like 30,000 copies. Like it was crazy because we had media contacts. And then, you know, people are contacting us. And then it became overwhelming because we had a garage and we had a storage unit. And our husbands were the delivery guys. And it was a lot. So we um, shopped for publishing houses that uh, would pick up self-published authors. And then we uh, uh, we got picked up. And then it, it blew up. You know, Nordstrom sponsored us. It was New York Times, People Magazine, morning talk shows. Um and, you know, more importantly, out of all that, the interesting thing is, you know, originally it was it was about a book about four young women going through breast cancer and reminding people, right, that that young women can and do get breast cancer because we were being dismissed by our doctors. But then it became about something bigger. It, it became about a story about hope and a story about friendship and all the different ways that it could impact other people. And so that was, that was the focus. Um, and, and, you know, and I still, it's funny. So when I went through my divorce or when I've been through other challenges in my life, um, or, you know, business challenges, whatever, I sometimes will go back and reread certain parts of the book. Mm. Um, and, you know, and, and maybe it's not my words, maybe it's Patty or Jana's section or, you know, something that someone said. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's, that's the impact. Um, and, you know, I think writing a book just for writing a book isn't isn't a thing. I mean, that's ego. It's really what impact can this make and how can this help others? Yeah, that's life changing for yeah. for you and for a lot of people, which yeah. is a beautiful thing. Uh, second question will go a little bit more lighthearted. I, I saw in the fun facts section of of uh, our research that you love Girl Scout cookies <laughs> and Thin Mints so much that you ate a lot of boxes during the pit, but there's no being ashamed of that. Cause just about yeah. everybody did something like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. By the way, I would recommend that whenever the Girl Scout cookies come out, if you love thin mints, you're going to eat a lot of sleeves of thin mints. Yeah. So tell me yeah. about that. And the important question, um, do you freeze them or no? Oh yeah. Frozen. Frozen yeah. are the best. Yeah. Uh, I full transparency ate 22 boxes in two years. Uh, and I would write my name in big Sharpie on them and say Kim's cookies. So my teenagers would not eat them. Uh, and I would get very mad if they did. Yes. Um, you know, I, I, I probably gained a little weight because of it, but, but I was supporting young female entrepreneurs. That's right. So that's, and I was a girl scout part. myself. Right. And so like, it, it's, it's all a part of that process. So, but I did learn during the pandemic, right. I'm still addicted to the thin mint girl scout cookies. Oh. So yeah. So good. I yeah. can be on any type of, you know, disciplined eating or not. But if they put the what's now called the caramel delights oh, or the Samoas, mm -hmm. I could eat a full box of those in one sitting. I try to just leave it to like a quarter or half of anyway. Yeah. Uh, and those are good frozen or not. And then the Thin Mints, my wife loves those. And, yeah. and I'm, I'm not saying I don't either. OK. Uh, yeah. Girl Scout season always gets me there's no getting around that i like it just supporting yeah. um supporting the economy supporting the kids it's all That's about the kids right. it's all about the kids it's all about the kids uh third question i saw that you have been on air force one tell me about yeah. that yeah so i uh it was actually when emmanuel cleaver was mayor and so anytime 
you know, whether it was senators, whether it was presidents, whether it was ambassadors who, you know, stars would come to town, we would help be the advanced people. So when Bill Clinton was president, um, we we got to go. We actually took him some Gates barbecue and uh, uh, they they let us kind of get a glimpse of that. And we got to meet, you know, Clinton as well at, at, at the earlier event, the, the, pre- the president at the time. So, uh, you know, it's just some amazing experiences. And it's funny now how, how things have changed, because at that time they had used to come. They might still do this. Uh, and and they'd have to lay their own telephone lines. Um, and this was when they had caller ID for those that don't know what caller ID is. You used to have a little machine that would tell you who called. So then you could screen your calls and decide if you were answering or not. And so the caller ID, I had to get a pre, you know, a security clearance and all that, but the caller ID that came up said the white house. So I had that picture and I had my little secret service pin and, uh, got to be on air force one. It was, it was awesome. Like some of the, just the amazing, you know, random yeah. things that we've all, we all get to experience in our lives. That's fun stuff. Okay, last thing you have been, and you highlighted this on the audio version of the podcast. I would encourage everybody to go back, check that out wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, or wherever it might be. But you talked about all of the, the ups and the downs, not just the, the cancer diagnosis and, and beating cancer, being a breast cancer survivor, but divorce, getting remarried, and all of that. H- how have you done all of that? Your life today is not anything you could have envisioned years ago right i mean you know you're married yeah. high school sweetheart yeah. who's now married to a good friend of yours and you found the new love of your life and he couldn't have envisioned this either because right. his wife passed away right. and yet it's all worked out beautifully too yeah. i'm just curious your perspective on it yeah you know and and it, it, i think it's a it's a reminder and a lesson for all of us that we're all going to have those hard and those challenges and 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 a part of it is letting go Right, I talk a lot about resigning as general manager of the universe. You know, letting go of what you thought your life would be and and instead stop shifting and reframing and focusing on what it is or what it can be, right? And I think sometimes we get so mired down in uh, the regrets or, well, I thought things would be different or I want things to be different. So part of that is that accepting what is and, and grieving and, and feeling all the feelings and doing everything you need to, to do to heal, but then recognizing and realizing that um, you have the power to then create what's next. And, and I think for so many of us, and, and uh, I work you know, with a lot of my, or, my, my companies and organizations that I work with, they struggle with this too, right? Because they're dealing with all these changes. Um, or my parents, right? I'm in the middle of the sandwich with aging parents and, and teenagers. And so mm-hmm. I think we all have our own stuff. And, and part of it is learning to um, let go of all the things that we're hold, holding tight to, right? Because how many of us are walking around holding our fists when, when if we live with our hands up, right? We're all on the roller coaster. If we live with our hands up, um, that feels a lot better. So how do you start letting go of all the things that are weighing you down or holding you back or keeping mm-hmm. you stuck and shifting so you can let go and truly then build that momentum of the life that and 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 business and and work that you were meant to do. So important and truly applies to everyone. Uh, those words are some something close to them are right there on the website too. It says unexpected changes stuff in quotes because it can mean whatever you want, whatever word you right. want to use. Stuff hitting the fan. I say it all the time, including the the biggest name athletes. Everybody has stuff. Yep. Just because we want to put them on a pedestal, they're a celebrity, they're this, they're a CEO, they're a superstar athlete, doesn't mean that they aren't going home to someone that is battling cancer, a sick child, a divorce, marital, whatever it is, everybody has got stuff. And I think that when we understand that, it enables us to meet them where they're at, which is what you talked about mm-hmm. in the audio version. Again, to let people know, you can learn more about Kim on her website, kimbecking.com. We've got it all in the show notes. Kim, enjoy the audio version. Enjoy the YouTube and the rounding the bases. Um, Really appreciate you and all the work you're doing. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thank you all.